Even the wisest of monarchs can find obstacles, and Solomon, the protagonist of this video, was no exception to this rule. Behind the greatness of his wisdom lies a vulnerability that, as it was revealed, brought his reign to the brink of the abyss. Today we will explore in detail every aspect narrated in the pages of Scripture, from Solomon's rise to the throne to his final days. I believe this meticulous study deserves your support with a like and a subscription to the channel. You are contributing enormously to the spread of this video. Now let's continue. Solomon was the son of King David and Bathsheba. He stands out as a remarkable figure in the biblical scriptures, recognized for his extraordinary wisdom, wealth, and fundamental role in the construction of the Temple of Jerusalem. His rise to the throne of Israel occurred amidst family challenges and intrigues. During the reign of Solomon, commercial relationships with other nations developed, which boosted trade and brought great wealth to the city. After David's death, his son Adonijah attempted to seize the throne, but the prophetic intervention of Nathan and Bathsheba ensured that Solomon, the one chosen by God, was crowned king. The divine revelation to David recorded in 1 Chronicles chapter 22 was clear. God said, You have shed much blood and fought many wars, therefore you will not build a temple in my honor. However, your son, who will be a man of peace and tranquility, will build the temple in Jerusalem. His name will be Solomon, and I will grant peace and tranquility to Israel during his reign. I will calm all the enemies around him. Solomon, whose name derives from the word Shalom, meaning peace, is also called Jedidiah in the Bible, meaning beloved by the Lord. The approximately 40-year reign of King Solomon over Israel was between 971 and 931 BC. The first years of Solomon's life and youth are practically unknown, but based on biblical information about David's family life, it is possible to establish a context for the environment in which Solomon grew up. David, known for his multiple wives, faced numerous family problems, resulting in intrigues between wives and children seeking prestige and power. Solomon emerges in biblical history during a tense period in the royal family, as a struggle for the throne of Israel unfolds due to the old age and weakness of King David. Before this episode, Absalom, Solomon's half-brother, had attempted to usurp his father's throne, but without success. Later, Adonijah, David's oldest surviving son, also attempted to proclaim himself king over Israel, echoing Absalom's action. Adonijah had the support of Joab, David's former general, and the priest Abiathar. He made numerous attempts to occupy the throne, including organizing a coronation festival. However, upon discovering Adonijah's plan, Bathsheba, the prophet Nathan, the priest, and other allies worked to remind David of the unfulfilled promise regarding Solomon as his successor. Thus, David issued orders related to Solomon's rise to the throne, and he was crowned king of Israel, anointed by Zadok, probably at the time of his coronation. When he began his reign, King Solomon was no more than 18 years old. He began by promoting peace and unity in the kingdom. His most striking characteristic that distinguished him among the leaders of his time was his extraordinary wisdom. In the early days of his reign, Solomon established an important covenant with God, revealing not only his wisdom but also his intention to seek divine guidance in his government. The details of this covenant and its conditions are documented in 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 3 to 14. The crucial event took place in Gibeon, where Solomon offered sacrifices before the Lord. That night, God appeared to Solomon in a dream and said, Ask me for whatever you want, and I will give it to you. Solomon expressed his humility, recognizing the responsibility of leading the people of Israel. 
In particular, he mentioned his need for wisdom to judge and govern with justice. He recognized his absolute dependence on God to guide his steps and make wise decisions that would benefit the people of Israel. Solomon's decision to ask for wisdom instead of wealth or personal success demonstrated his desire to lead with integrity and justice, reflecting the heart of a wise and God-fearing leader. Solomon stood out for his mental sharpness and ability to resolve disputes. God's response to Solomon's plea was remarkable. God praised the king's choice and, in addition to granting him the requested wisdom, promised additional blessings, including unmatched riches and honors in the history of Israel. A famous episode that illustrates this wisdom is that of two women disputing the maternity of a child. The narration found in 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 16 to 28 describes two women who lived together and gave birth at approximately the same time. However, one of the children died, leading both women to claim the surviving child as their own. Faced with this impasse, the women presented themselves before King Solomon asking for justice. Instead of making a hasty decision, Solomon proposed an extraordinary solution. He suggested dividing the child in half and giving half to each woman. Each woman's response revealed the true mother. The woman who genuinely loved the child begged the king not to harm him and instead suggested giving him to the other woman. The other woman, who was not the biological mother, accepted the division. Solomon's crafty response revealed the true mother to be the one willing to give up the child to protect him from any harm. Then, Solomon declared that the lawful mother was the one who had shown genuine maternal love and ordered that the child be given to this mother. In addition to his wisdom, Solomon also stood out for notable achievements, including the construction of the Temple of Jerusalem. This great enterprise not only served as the spiritual epicenter of the kingdom, but also symbolized the constant presence of God among the people of Israel. The magnificence of the temple reflected not only Solomon's administrative skill, but also the opulence and prosperity of the kingdom. The desire to build a temple to the Lord was initially conceived by his father, King David. However, it was Solomon who carried out this noble project. This temple is considered one of the most magnificent structures of antiquity and is mentioned in great detail in the Bible. The biblical narration meticulously describes precious materials like cedar from Lebanon for the structure and pure gold for the ornaments used in the temple's construction, reflecting the king's dedication, reverence, and love for God. The place chosen for the temple, Mount Moriah, had profound symbolic meaning as it was the same place where Abraham had demonstrated his faith by being willing to sacrifice his son Isaac. This act of faith and obedience that preceded the temple's construction emphasized the continuity of the special relationship between God and his people. Solomon's temple became the spiritual and cultural epicenter of Israel, becoming a symbol of unity in worship. In addition, Solomon dedicated himself to building international alliances, solidifying commercial and diplomatic relationships. A notable example of these external relations was the visit of the Queen of Sheba, who came to test Solomon's wisdom. These events are narrated in 1 Kings chapter 10, verses 1 to 13, and in 2 Chronicles chapter 9, verses 1 to 12. Upon arriving in Jerusalem, the Queen of Sheba presented challenging questions to Solomon, testing his wisdom. The Bible reports that Solomon answered all her questions, and there was nothing he could not explain. The queen's journey to Jerusalem was marked by an impressive caravan carrying abundant spices, gold, and precious stones. The exchange of gifts during the visit highlighted the high diplomatic character of this encounter. In addition to the Queen of Sheba's visit, Solomon established diplomatic relations with other kingdoms, formed marriage alliances with princesses from neighboring nations like Egypt and Phoenicia, 
a common practice at the time to strengthen alliances and promote peace among kingdoms. However, throughout his reign, Solomon was not immune to failures. Despite being acclaimed for his wisdom and greatness, his story is also marked by mistakes and deviations that eventually had important consequences for his government and the history of Israel. One of Solomon's greatest mistakes was his relationship with foreign women against divine instructions. 1 Kings chapter 11 verses 1 to 3 relates that Solomon had many foreign wives, including Pharaoh's daughter, and took princesses from neighboring nations, disobeying God's law prohibiting marriages with women who worshipped other gods. These marriages were not only political alliances, they also introduced foreign cultural and religious influences into Israel. The foreign wives brought with them religious practices that gradually exerted a negative influence on Solomon. He began to tolerate the worship of various idols and to participate in rituals contrary to the exclusive worship of the God of Israel. The culmination of this deviation was the construction of temples to idols in honor of his wives' deities, an act that directly contradicted God's commandments. This apostasy, including the construction of altars, marked Solomon's final days, as reported in 1 Kings chapters 11 and 12. This period was characterized by a mixture of glory and shadows that reveals the complexities of life and government. As Solomon aged, his earlier decisions, especially regarding marriage to foreign women and acceptance of foreign idol worship, began to have a negative impact on his reign. God's anger manifested itself by raising adversaries against Solomon. Jeroboam, a trusted official, rebelled against the king and became a prominent leader who would eventually lead the northern tribes. Solomon's death marked the end of an era. He died after a 40-year reign, leaving a legacy that included the majestic construction of the Temple of Jerusalem and an unprecedented period of peace and prosperity. The Bible does not provide specific details about the exact cause of Solomon's death. However, in 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 41 to 43, it is recorded that the rest of the history of Solomon, his deeds and the wisdom he demonstrated, are written in the book of Acts of the kings of Israel. He rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. He was succeeded by his son, Rehoboam. With Solomon's death, Rehoboam ascended to the throne, resulting in the division of the kingdom of Israel into two, the northern kingdom led by Jeroboam and the southern kingdom formed mainly by the tribes of Judah and Benjamin led by Rehoboam. Thus, the last days of Solomon were followed by a tumultuous transition for his son, who witnessed the division of the kingdom built by his father. Facing the consequences of his choices, Solomon's story serves as an eloquent reminder of the importance of ethical and spiritual decisions and of their long-term consequences in the life of a leader and the destiny of a nation. If you have made it this far, I understand you must have enjoyed the content, so please leave your opinion on the story in the comments. And if you like videos made in this way, telling stories of scripture characters, for us, your opinion is very important and helps us a lot. If you are interested, we can continue and cover other biblical figures. Share this video with your loved ones and people who may be interested in the topic. May God bless you. See you soon.